Welcome. I am James Milan, and this is Town Meeting Matters. Um, we uh, have with us today our town meeting moderator, John Leone. And uh, I'll tell you that this whole idea of Town Meeting Matters came up last spring when we had a very unusual town meeting that needed to be arranged, and we needed to get important information out to folks about how that would look and feel. And John was a, a, the authoritative source for that at that time, and then pulled off uh, the meeting that you may recall uh, happened on Pierce Field at the high school uh, in a way that was incredibly smooth. So with that preface, John, we thought, well, let's have you back to explain what's gonna happen this time, because it's again, very different from what town meetings have been in the past. So first of all, as always, thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. Hey, you're welcome. Glad to do it. Appreciate it. Um, and yes, we, we basically, what we wanna do here is just present for town meeting members themselves, but also for the broader audience, um, what town meeting is gonna look and feel like uh, this time around. So first of all, we need to acknowledge that it's happening in mid-November, uh, which is not uh, a normal thing. Um, and I guess in that sense, this is a special town meeting, even though what you're really doing, I think, is taking care of all the business that needed to be deferred or much of the business that needed to be deferred from the spring. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. So it is technically a special town meeting because it's not our annual, which the annuals are held in the spring. The specials are held any other time of the year. And we're taking up 24 articles. 25, 24, 25 articles now, um, several of which were deferred from the spring, but not all of the um, citizen articles, the 10 registered voter articles chose to go forward this time around. A couple of them are deferring till next spring, but frankly, I think unless we get our um, COVID vaccine up, this is gonna be a good dry run for next spring. Mm -hmm. Right, yes, I mean, we might have thought and hoped that it was going to be a temporary solution that was required um, back in the spring of this year, uh, but now it's clearer for all of us that this is a world we're going to be living in for a while. Yes. So walk us through, uh, John, what town meeting is gonna be like, because this is gonna be a virtual town meeting. It's gonna be a virtual town meeting, which I started calling VTM for short. So our, our virtual meeting is gonna be held similar to this Zoom conference that we're on right now, except it's gonna have an added portal to it. So we've um, adopted from the town of Lexington, their um, spring town meeting and their specials have been using this portal. We've uh, got the rights to that and have been working with the developer and, and have changed it to meet our needs, the town of Arlington's needs. Our town meetings are held differently. Every town is held differently. So basically the town meeting members will log in. They each have their own name, their own account and password. They log into the portal, which is basically similar to coming in and logging in with the town clerk and checking into town hall. Once they're in the portal, they will participate in the meeting and they have another button to open the Zoom. And only town meeting members and some town staff who will be speaking roles such as um, the chief of police, the head of public works, uh, head of planning department, Ms. Ray, will also have attendee privileges for obvious reasons. That they will have been beyond the Zoom and the portal allows the town meeting members to participate fully in the meeting. However, as it's presented as a Zoom webinar, so they won't be as live as they are on um, the town meeting floor, but they will have the ability 
through one of the screens they can access to uh, raise their hand, to raise points of order. And because of the way the legislation authorizing virtual town meeting is, um, it will be a vi a visible to the public who has actually raised their hand and is on the speaking list. It will be visible to the public who has made a point of order. And my job as the moderator in conjunction with, I have two um, staff members who are working with me during the meeting. One is the Zoom controller and one is the um, display controller. Um, I'll call on Mr. Milan and I'll announce James Milan wants to speak. The Zoom controller will find them and you will come up a photograph of you, not a live feed. And you'll be able to speak for your seven minutes if you have a presentation. Um, we've been working with ACMI to have presentations drafted, um, recorded and put onto um, some YouTube channel. I don't know where the heck it is, mm -hmm. uh, but it's gonna be, those will be available on the town meeting website in advance so we can watch them. Those presentations will pop up on the screen by the display controller. We'll watch your presentation and then just like in town meeting, question and answers. I will call through the people with their um, questions and we'll go through a town meeting as if we were in the same room with the aid of the, um, the, the portal. And when someone moves to terminate the debate, just like in town meeting, we're going to take a vote. And when the votes happen, I call for the vote. The display controller brings up the voting screen. He authorizes voting. Um, I say he because it's a gentleman who's doing it. He'll authorize voting. And on town meeting portal page, they have yes, no, and abstain. And they cast their vote. And it tells them how they voted. And on our end of it, there's a screen saying that James has voted. And then when voting closes, it'll tell us and show us how everybody voted. Yes, no, or abstain. And it gives us a, a percentage to say whether or not it, uh, the article passed. And then the actual tally, which is our official vote. Um, the problem is, in town meeting, we have 20 seconds to vote. Here, it might take up to two minutes because um, people have to navigate from their Zoom screen to their portal screen. They have to figure out where they are. They got to make sure their portal is refreshed and they have the right buttons. And I can see on my screen, because I have um, one of the hosts, I can see who hasn't voted yet. And I'll ask, uh, Mr. Milan, you haven't voted, you having a problem. And if you do, you're going to use the Zoom raise hand feature. I'll promote you to speaking and I'll say, what's your problem, Jim? And you'll say, I can't find my Zoom screen. I can't find this. And we have the ability to then have you give us your vote verbally and enter it for you. So we'd have you announce, I vote yes on this article. I would repeat it. And then we would manually log you in and vote for you while one of our IT staff works with you behind the scenes to make sure you can participate and vote on the next one. So we have our Zoom controller. We got our display controller. We got a backup for each of them. And we're gonna have an IT staff of at least four people every night um, to make this happen. It's a lot of behind the scenes um, effort on the town's part to make this go. Uh, all in all, I think there's about, besides me, there's about 12 town people I've been working with over the last few weeks to get this up and running along with uh, Len Diggins our selectman and Eric Helmuth, our um, volunteer techie, who has, they've both put a lot of time in as well. Well, I gotta say, John, from what you've just described, it yeah. sounds like if all goes well, um, it will be a relatively seamless transition from what 
is a normal town meeting taking place in town hall uh, to getting the business done virtually um, in the ways that you've described it. And of course, the big if there is if everything goes smoothly, because it does seem like the process you just described has a number of places in which things can get can just start to take much longer than they than they normally would uh, to resolve these things. It's going to um, take longer. So if, if we can move through articles pretty quickly in town meeting, don't anticipate quickly moving through anything. Everything. Does that mean, John, that uh, we can anticipate as a community that town meeting uh, is likely to go through a number of sessions um, for you to be able to get to 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 and through all the articles? Um, yes, um, I've put about a dozen articles on a consent agenda, so that will take care of half the warrant. And I'm in. Type and just to clarify for people what a consent agenda is, it's basically you're taking, you're grouping all these articles and, right. and there's a single yay or nay or abstain on uh, for the whole group. And that vote uh, gets translated down to all of the other articles. And those are things that are um, not con uncontroversial. They shouldn't warrant any debate. We should just vote yes or no. Um, and town meeting members have the ability to take things off the consent agenda by using the raised hand feature on Zoom. Um, so I'm guessing three, maybe four meetings to do those other 12, 13 articles. And my understanding is that the, obviously that we know that uh, town meeting starts uh, in next Monday, uh, 16th. the 16th. Um, and then you will be proceeding on the usual town meeting schedule of Mondays and Wednesday nights. Right. So uh, if it goes to a fourth session, is that, is that going, that's the night before Thanksgiving, right? Yeah, I'm not going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> all no. right. So maybe we're all we'll keeping fingers crossed for three sessions, right? Yeah, we'll punt until the, um, the 30th. Oh, okay. So we don't interfere with um, pie preparation for, for Thanksgiving. <laughs> All right, so people, but people can and should anticipate that it is most likely that there will be a session on the 16th, another on the 18th, another on the 23rd, and then right. we'll see what happens from Yeah, there. we'll see, you know, um, the, and I'm gonna again rely on Lexington's experience. Their biggest issues they had were people logging on, uh, log on issues, um, being flipping from the Zoom screen to the portal if they are technically adept, they can shrink each one of them down and, and figure out how to bounce back and forth. I, I have uh, great respect for our town meeting members and I think about 95% of them are gonna just pick this right up and the other 5% will walk through, they'll get it too. Um, we have a couple folks who don't even have computers don't have um, cable TV. So they're going to be able to vote by um, telephoning in their vote or I'll make other arrangements with them one way or another. Um, we don't wanna disenfranchise any of our town meeting members and their rights to vote here. So we're working with everybody. Well, I think, um, I, I think town meeting members will be uh, heartened and appreciative of the fact that you're, you're, you're the numbers you, put up there 95% yeah. um, of them you have confidence will uh, will will be able to do this without much without well, much trouble. We've gone through seven nights of training, uh, an hour and a half to two hours long each night with groups of town meeting members between 25 and 45 people. And I, I'm pretty heartened by the responses we've gotten and the ability of them to pick it up and get right on it and being able to flip between the two screens and vote, uh, participate. Um, and I, you have touched on this already, but just to, just to distill it a little bit, what do you foresee as the, the, the greatest challenges for the town meeting members in making this transition to a new format? And then out of curiosity, for yourself, what do you anticipate oh. will be the great 
great challenge? Um, the greatest challenge for the town meeting members will be handling the technology aspect of it and getting used to the fact we are not all together in the hall and that they want to do something. It's, it's a, now a multi-step process. I'm sorry about that phone ringing in the background. It's a multi-step process. It's not, you know, raise your hand and stand up and yell at me. It's, they've got to do things more in advance. Um, everything has to be done in advance. It's going to be less um, spontaneity. And, and I've been stressing that to the town meeting members through mailings and emails that, you know, we've got to plan this out. This isn't the normal floor of town meeting. Um, and you're a busy man. It's the same person. Oh. <laughs> if they're angry, we won't pick the phone up. Um, and the um, the challenge for me will be that same thing. Um, just working with the technology. I like to move the meeting along. Um, and I've been working at it to, to get an efficient meeting. This is going to slow our pace down a lot. Just like the voting. You know, 20 seconds, we've got a vote where it moved on to the next article. Here, I, we've got to twiddle our thumbs for a couple minutes to make sure everybody's voted. Um, and if someone's having an issue, I got to find out why, you know, because their vote could make a difference. And we, and we want to make sure everyone's voted. Well, I remember back in June uh, how um, surprised and delighted uh, the majority of both town meeting members and, and others in the community were with how smoothly everything went on Pierce Field that day. It was quite remarkable and, and a real testament to the planning that had gone in um, on your end and, and a lot of other people's. Um, so I guess we just need to kind of look at this as, you know, on balance in mm -hmm. 2020, you'll have had a normal town meeting, a much faster one than you thought in in June and, and uh, you know, probably a slower one this time around. Well, true. We had our record quick 45 minute annual town meeting. I think that was the one for the record books and this is gonna be one also. I mean, we're gonna do a Zoom town meeting now a virtual VTM, virtual. And I think frankly, we're gonna be doing it again in the spring. Um, I don't see us being able to all gather in town hall come April. But I do look forward to getting back into town hall and having a good old fashioned. <laughs> yeah, it will. I, I think, like so many other things, right, just yeah. returning to what we had always thought of as normal, and taken for granted is going to feel like quite the luxury and the privilege for a while. I I'm going to miss the bake sale. <laughs> <laughs> that, that too, right? No, virtual cookies just don't do it. All right, anything else, John, that we should make sure that people understand, again, either as town meeting members who I know have, as you've already described, been through already a, a fairly extensive process and right. there is a mock town meeting schedule. We, we're speaking today, Monday the 9th, uh, mock town meeting scheduled for tomorrow night. Um, yeah, tomorrow night's our dress rehearsal. Mm -hmm. So that is gonna be with all 252 town meeting members, hopefully. And so this, our staff and I are gonna be on um, really a test. If we've, part of those trainings has been to get us trained so that we have a, a smooth flow and a, we're able to present a polished product basically to everybody because the first night is a little rough by the top, last one, we were working pretty well together. Um, so I'm just gonna ask town meeting members and the town to bear with us because it's the first time out for us too. And we're trying, we'll, I think we'll get it. A yeah, lot I, I think if it's not clear enough already, um, particularly for town meeting members themselves, um, but for everybody in the community, mm -hmm. patience is the byword here. And, oh, and obviously um, just understanding that everybody's doing the best they can. And, um, and you know, you just kind of need to go with the flow. So hopefully yeah. you yeah. get a good night's sleep tonight in preparation for tomorrow's run through. And, mm -hmm. then, uh, and then 
everybody gets some good nights sleep um, preceding those meetings because it does seem like, you know, as always, there will be substantive issues uh, that that are of great importance to the community that need to be dealt with thoughtfully. Uh, but then there's going to be this added this added burden of just uh, being patient with the technology. Mm -hmm. And it's I have full faith we'll be able to do it well. We'll get um, a good town meeting done and we'll move forward. Keep this town going. You're here. Um, if if you don't feel like there's anything else that needs to be addressed, we can let you go. No, I think that's it. I think we did a pretty good job. And if anybody has any questions, they can email my town address. And I'm glad to answer any questions anyone has. Yeah, otherwise you'll be twiddling your thumbs between now and next week, I'm sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have been speaking with our town moderator, uh, our town meeting moderator, John Leone, who, you know, really has um, had quite uh, the, the, the task in front of him over this long, long year of ours. And uh, so far, so good. Uh, keep up the good work, John. Best of luck next week. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. This is James Milan. You've been watching Town Meeting Matters, and we'll see you in the future.